Uh, welcome to episode 101 of Juan's World. Beginning a new century. And remember that centuries begin with the year one, not with the year zero. So one to 100 is my first century and 101 begins my second century. And I'm going to ramble a bit, as I normally do. I'm going to talk about language, and in particular, I want to talk about consistency in language, mostly with the English language right now. And mostly, I'm going to talk about plurals in English when we have loan words. That is, standard English words you add s or es depending on the ending of the word but when you have a word borrowed from another language like italian or latin and those are the ones i'm going to concentrate on mostly greek a little bit and some other languages maybe if i ramble that far and i want to ask the question why we change the rule for making plurals when we borrow words from some languages, but not when we borrow them from others, and we're not consistent. And as I promised on Facebook, I'm gonna give a shout out to my friend Emily Plural, <laughs> because her name is Plural, and also to um, Delia, who used to be Delia Snow back in the days when we were in school together and she's uh, something of a stickler for language and I thought I would in part dedicate this to her and also to Emily. So let's begin. What I'm mostly interested in is the fact that languages are not entirely consistent and that makes it difficult for us sometimes to express ourselves clearly. Well, the more meaty part of that discussion I'm going to leave for some later date. Right now I just want to think about how languages borrow words from other languages. And the reason that this occurred to me today, it's July 23rd when I'm making this, even though it will be July 24th when it's shown. July 23rd, 1929 was the date on which Mussolini's government in Italy declared that all foreign words were to be outlawed. Now this is a very common habit in nationalistic and fascistic cultures to want to make the standard language of the nation to be pure, not adulterated by foreign influences. But in Mussolini's case, it was actually a little bit more complicated than that. For him, foreign words meant words that were not part of standard Italian, but came from dialects within the Italian peninsula. So for example, the common um, greeting and goodbye, ciao, he wanted to ban because it came from Venetian dialect and not the standard dialect, the Tuscan dialect that was 
attempting to be universal in unified Italy. In, in, um, in Venetian dialect, the, it, it comes from a phrase, um, I believe it's Sciao uh, Su or Sciao Vostro, which means your slave or your servant, um, or just, you know, at your service or something like that. But regardless, Mussolini didn't like it. He wanted to, he wanted to get rid of it because he wanted all Italian to be standardized. And so foreign for him meant dialect as much as French words or English words or even Latin words. So that's my starting point. We have a lot of words in English that come from Latin and that come from Italian. And one of the things that intrigues me is that generally speaking, when we adopt a word from Latin, we use the Latin plural. But when we borrow a word from Italian, we don't. In fact, we get singular and plural in Italian completely uh, upside down. Now let's start with, it, with Latin. Latin has really three uh, nominative case endings depending on whether they're feminine, masculine, or neuter. It's more complicated, but let's just keep it simple. The feminine singular is a or a, and the plural is i, that is ae. The masculine is us, and the plural is e, that, that is i, but pronounced e, and um, um, which is the neuter, and the plural is a. And let me just think of some standard English words. Uh, formula is from Latin, and the Latin plural is formulae. And that was at one time the most common plural. Us. Um, um, try, I'm <laughs> having a little um, senior moment here because the two us words that I that I want to use are incorrect and I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, fungus, fungi, or locus, loci. Interesting one because the C changes from hard to soft in the plural. And um, uh, memorandum, um, which we usually shortened to memo, but memorandum, plural, memoranda. Okay, well, one of the things that's happened in English over the years is that many, many of these Latinate plurals have fallen away because the study of Latin has fallen away. In the 19th century, if you're educated, then you spent a lot of your secondary education learning Latin. And even down to my day in the 1960s when I was in secondary school, Latin was not a requirement, but it was strongly preferred for students going to university. And in some countries, including Australia, you needed Latin in order to get your degree at university. That's all passed by the wayside, but the thing is that educated people in the 19th and early 20th century would have known the Latin plurals and would have used them automatically. Now it's considered to be a little bit pedantic if you say formulae as opposed to formulas, which is it's okay, it's a good English plural, um, or forum, fora, <laughs> no. But here's, here's one part that, that always aggravates me. Words like media and data are plural. The singulars are medium 
and uh, datum. If you have one datum, one piece of information, if you have more than one piece of information, you have data, plural. And when you're talking about the media, such as social media, you're talking about many different media. So one of the things that constantly aggravates me is to hear people say, the problem with social media is that, and then the singular follows that, like social media is a big problem in the modern world. Social media is always getting things wrong. Social media is um, purveying misinformation. Social media are purveying <laughs> misinformation. It's plural. That, that's one that has slipped by because practically nobody in the modern world studies Latin anymore. But here's two, and that they, I was stumbling over them a little bit when I was trying to think of the plural of us, because there are two that also trouble me. One is syllabus, like the syllabus of a, um, a university course, and octopus. Now, people who don't know any Latin assume that words that end in us take a plural in I or E. So the plural of octopus should be octopi and the plural of syllabus should be syllabi. Well, they are both fundamental mistakes based on a misunderstanding of what the words originally meant and what languages they originally came from. They both came from Greek, not from Latin. So let's start with a relatively simple one. Let's start with octopus. Okay, in English, it ends in U-S. And if you don't know your philology, if you don't know where the word comes from, you might think it's a Latin word and therefore the plural of octopus should be octopi. Thing is, it's not a Latin word, it's a Greek word. It's octo, eight, pus, foot. And the plural of pus is podi. So if you're going to be consistent with the Greek, then the plural of octopus should be octopodi. And it is actually used <laughs> rarely by uh, strict pedants, but most people will say octopuses, <laughs> even though it's a s -s 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 funny sounding word. Syllabus is a little bit more complicated. Syllabus is actually technically a Latin word, but it's what we call a modern Latin word, and it's a misattribution of a Greek word. The original Greek word was syllabus, and syllabus means a table of contents or an index or something like that, a, a list of um, themes. And it was adopted into modern Latin with a change from the, the T sound to the L sound because of a misunderstanding of what the word actually was. So it got put into modern Latin, we're talking about now in the Renaissance, and it became syllabus. But it's not really a correct Latin word. And perhaps one could argue, say, well, even if it's a modern Latin word, you can still give it a, a Latin plural, but strictly speaking, it's a Greek word, uh, syllabus, and should have a Greek plural, syllaboi, so, or syllaboi, but <laughs> we're not going to do any of that. The, what I would call an accurate plural these days is to just adopt English plural and call it 
and call, call you know, multiple ones, one syllabus, many syllabuses. And that's, in fact, the preferred usage in many dictionaries. But this brings me to my important topic, that is that people become pretentious when they use language and they feel like, ah, I know better than everybody else. I know enough Latin to know that the plural of us is I and therefore it should be syllabi because I'm so smart and so educated. And what you're in fact showing is that you don't know much of anything about etymology. So what's been happening toward the end of the 20th century and on the end of the 21st century is that more and more the Latin plurals have been dropped because they are, you can either call them pedantic or um, pretentious, <laughs> what you will. Um, but the assumption was that educated people knew Latin and, and so forming the correct plurals in English was an indication of your education, which at one point may very well have been true. But now here's the interesting question and that is why we do it or some English speakers do it for words derived from Latin but not from Italian. In fact, English gets Italian wrong all the time. It mixes up singular and plural, and it doesn't use Italian plurals. The uh, simplest example I can give is pizza. Pizza is a good Italian word, very good Italian food. The plural of pizza in Italian is pizze. Why don't we say, okay, I would like two pizza, please. <laughs> it, just, it just, I mean, it sounds ridiculous. We say pizzas. We, we've adopted the word into English and we use the English plural. Fine, it's all fine with me. There are many languages where when we adopt a word, we either don't have a plural or don't know it. Like if we adopt a word from Chinese, for example. We can't use a Chinese plural because Chinese plurals don't exist. They don't use plural forms. My Chinese teacher <laughs> always used to laugh and say, I don't understand why I have to use a plural. Why can't I just say, I have two dog? And there's no real answer to that. It's perfectly understandable to say one dog, two dog, three dog, which is what Chinese does. Although it has count <laughs> words in there, you can't just say one dog. You have to say one small animal count word, dog. So it has its own particular strangeness. But what is it about Italian? And particularly, why do we use the plural forms to mean the singular? For example, cannoli, or panini, or graffiti, they're all plural. You can't say one cannoli, or one panini, it's one cannolo, one panino. Um, <laughs> one little scribble on the wall is one graffito. We use the plural without thinking. I, I'm. I'm thinking that it might be because there are certain common plurals like spaghetti, macaroni. And well, of course they're plural because you don't have one spaghetto, you know, one strand. You, you, you have many strands, so you have spaghetti, macaroni. And I guess by um, uh, false association, then you also have panini, graffiti, and so forth. And here I think we can also deal with expectations. 
that is there is no expectation in the English language if you're a native English speaker that you've studied Italian that you can't say oh he's a particularly educated man or she's a particularly educated woman because she studied Latin and Greek uh, we can't say she's a particularly educated woman because she studied Italian uh, doesn't doesn't work there's no expectation that native English speakers will know in general how Italian works okay so now you're asking why am I talking about all of this very simple languages have rules they have a certain degree of logical consistency but they also have a lot of inconsistency a lot of complicated things that don't make any sense but we just do them anyway and that no attempt at regularizing or formalizing a language as Mussolini tried to do with standard Italian is going to work because languages just keep evolving they're, they're plastic things they move and shape and change over time according to circumstances according to what uh, cultures English speakers encounter um, certain difficulties with the language that get resolved in a higgledy-piggledy kind of a way and trying to impose order is not going to work the people who most like to impose order are authoritarian dictators and of course the classic example is Newspeak in George Orwell's 1984 Orwell through one of his um, characters says that the purpose of Newspeak is to prevent people from being able to have thoughts that are against the party like if, if you don't have the words for uh, revolutionary um, thinking and, and action then you just won't be able to have revolutionary thoughts well I don't know whether I'm sad to say or happy to say this is just not true that people will find a way that I guess I would put it this way that that thinking comes first and words come second not the other way around you cannot you cannot uh, straitjacket people's thoughts by limiting their uh, vocabulary they can straitjacket their own thoughts <laughs> and they can straitjacket their own vocabulary of course but it cannot be imposed from the outside just not possible okay well that's the starting point I'm going to go a little bit further in future videos but for now I would like you to tell your friends about what I'm doing to like subscribe and I will see you on Tuesday maybe with a recipe maybe with more thoughts about rationality and consistency not sure so bye for now